Welcome to the Tectora tutorial for Wipeout HD Fury. Tectora is for the most part an open circuit, but that doesn't mean it's easy. There's a considerable number of open sections where the track narrows, and there are also a number of very tricky corners to navigate. So let's start by having a look at the track on Venom class. And now I'll take you through the whole track step by step. The circuit throws you into a tricky corner series right from the off. A quick left hander following straight into a sharp right. If you take a look at the first left hander you can see it's sloped over to the left. Bearing in mind that the track curves round to the right immediately afterwards, it should be an ideal opportunity to cut the corner entirely and also to barrel roll in the process. It's a very tricky manoeuvre to pull off though. You do need to get the nose up at exactly the right time. Too late and you'll slam straight into the wall and grind to a halt. So begin by approaching from the centre and tap the left air brake to pull over towards the left apex. When you reach it, slam on the right air brake and pull the nose up hard. This should allow you to clear the wall. Barrel roll as you go over, but keep turning while you're in mid-air. You need to go through a full 90 degrees. There's a set of speed pads on the other side of the wall as well. If you land in the right place, you can hit one of them. Once you land, the track bends round to the right before throwing you straight into a long left hander. Aim for the speed pad on the inside and then keep as close to the right wall as you can. The long left hander ahead is ascending, which means that the craft is liable to be thrown over to the outside. As you navigate the corner, you need to attempt to keep the craft as close to the centre as you can. So keep tapping the left air brake as you go through the corner. Don't worry too much about the back end shifting to the outside, just try to keep the nose as close to the centre as you can. If you can do this, there's two speed pads to be hit as well, one halfway through the corner and the other on the exit. From here on, the track becomes much more open. On exiting the left hander, as you go over this peak, barrel roll down the straight. Stay over to the left hand side if you want a weapon pad, or to the right if you want a speed pad. If you have a turbo going down this straight, you can use the peak ahead of you to your advantage. As you go over the pads, pull the nose up and hit the turbo. You'll only gain a small amount of height, but it will be enough to pull off a barrel roll. However, ahead of you, the track curls around to the left and then to the right. Because of the speed you're travelling at, the exit may not be very pretty. The long fast section ahead has two quick right bends and then a longer right corner at the end. Its key feature though is that several sections are open. The track also has a nasty habit of narrowing as you go into these open sections, so it's surprisingly easy to fall off the track. As you go through you need to keep the craft as close to the centre as possible. The only time you should deviate from the centre is if you're going for a speed or weapon pad. The most dangerous part of this whole section though comes right at the start. When you take the first right bend ahead of you, you need to make sure you do not drift over to the left under any circumstances. The reason being is that the left wall suddenly curves inwards as the track narrows. Stray too far over to the left, you're going to end up clipping it and you may end up being thrown off the track as a result. For the remainder of this section, you shouldn't need to air brake at all. Just guide the craft through naturally. As I said earlier, the final right corner is a lot tighter than the ones previous, so you need to be a lot more aggressive with the right air brake to keep the craft on the central line. Once you reach the speed pad though, you want to get over to the right hand side as quickly as you can, as there's a very nasty corner series to finish things off. The final corner series here is comparable to the final corner series at the end of Ubermore Forward. This is both in terms of difficulty and the method you need to employ to tackle it successfully. The series itself is made up of a very sharp left-hander followed by a sudden right-hander at the exit. The fact that you have two sharp corners one after the other makes it very difficult to get a good approach to the second. 
The key to this approach lies in how you tackle the first corner. You need to keep the craft as close to the outside wall as you can. You should see there's some white markings on the track on the outside. Try to keep the craft hovering over these as you go through the corner. You'll need to use a lot of left air braking to do this. As soon as you see the right hander, you immediately need to left side shift over to the inside and then use the right air brake to flick the craft through the corner. Timing is everything when doing this. It's very easy to hit the right air brake too early and slam into the apex. If you do manage to exit the corner over to the inside, you'll hit a speed pad to take you down the final straight. Otherwise, there's a weapon pad on the outside. Let's take one last look at this final corner series. The two keys to tackling it successfully are your initial approach to the first left hander and then the timing of the right air brake when you take the right hander at the end. It is definitely one of the most difficult corner series in the game and even I still have great difficulty with it. And now let's see the whole lap done at full Phantom class speed. Thank you for watching, good luck with the game.